What exactly are scientists looking for in this subatomic car crash? Well, the data court is only available for a very short time, but they hope to identify exotic new particles in the wreckage. Huge detectors have been stationed at points where the beams slam into each other, which record the information. The first research experiment proved the existence of the Higgs boson, known as the guard particle, which is responsible for giving other particles mass. This time round, though, scientists are aiming a little higher. They hope to find evidence of hidden extra dimensions and dark matter. of the energy of dark matter in them and matter. So they contain both matter and antimatter in a sense, the signature of energy. They're not put together. It's just that signature. And we draw upon those based upon our thoughts and what's in our minds and what's in our hearts. With CERN, as they begin to collide these protons, Dark matter is going to be produced in great numbers. I mean, in greater and greater numbers. Not only the matter, but the energy signature is going to also be released into this realm. You know what that's going to cause? It's going to cause the dark energy signature within people to begin to activate more and more. It's going to become difficult for people to stay contained or controlled. Yeah, Marianne, this one is really hard to hear. Juanita Gomez is here at the Oklahoma County Jail. She's facing a first degree murder charge. And court documents show that she admitted to police she stuffed a crucifix down her daughter's throat and she says she watched her daughter die. In essence, they're going to become violent. They're going to become, they're going to have vivid dreams. The darkness within a person is absolutely going to begin to surface. This is absolutely 100% quantifiable, and it's happened before. It's going to happen in greater numbers this time. Police have arrested a woman who they say ran her car into a Walmart store on purpose. Police say they arrived to find that Crystal Marshall had gotten out of her car and was screaming. An officer at the scene says the marshal told him that the rapture was coming and that God told her to do it. It's going to, it will take effect. That's also been weaponized. Nobody knows this, and I, I probably won't be in trouble for this, but they have a weapon concerning dark matter that they can put within a country or a specific place to cause chaos. It's a weapon. They've used it before. They can unleash this and it can cause chaos anywhere they want chaos to be rampant. Two people are dead and five others injured after a man goes on a stabbing spree in Massachusetts. The Massachusetts man who killed two people during a crosstown stabbing spree was hospitalized for suicidal thoughts just a day earlier, but was released despite his repeated claims that the devil was playing tricks on his mind. Also, there's something very important about that. There, I know this firsthand. There are often times you have to partake in the weapons development program, and you become a, a rat, so to speak, in a maze to see firsthand what the effects are going to be. Not to come in the back either. Again, on the streetway, anyone responding to 101704 South Road, do not park in the front or the rear of the building. They found the force that holds the dark energy or the dark matter away from this realm. They call it the wall. There's another name for that. A name of which that, that those particles they're going to find, they found part of They're going to find the other pieces that are in that wall. And when they find the other pieces to this wall, they will then be able to undo that wall. There's another name for that wall. The veil. It holds back that realm. They found out what's holding back the dark energy from, because it would be absolutely destructive if the two met. But they found out 
Now with this as a weapon, there is no counter weapon to this. China is building an LHC facility. They're building a particle accelerator. There are to present day count about uh, 14 particle accelerators in existence. The immediate effects are not what I'm worried about. That's not my concern. The psychological effects on people is going to become quite evident. And I know that people will come under some strange attacks, some strange occurrences and incidents. I know that the only way they can be protected from such things is their belief in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can't fake it. There is no substitute. People know if a person is real or not because they emit a different energy. That energy is that wall that the, this other realm cannot reach. You can't breach it. And they're, they're, it's absolutely going to take effect. The, the collider, it, it, think of a collider as a um, hundreds of nuclear explosions taking place within one second and they're containing it. It goes beyond fusion. It's in a realm by itself when they collide protons. They are going to find these particles and within months they're going to put into motion what we talked about today and people are going to feel these effects and in this other realm is going to begin to spill over in multiple places everywhere. Violence will increase. The, the crucial side of this is that with this show coming up people are going to realize all too painfully uh, what we've talked about today but they have to start now they they really have to they can't make excuses for their flesh anymore they cannot make excuses for their emotional state anymore they're going to if they if they love the lord if they truly want to be with him if they can recognize his love for them they're going to have to fight for it today they're going to have to fight for it every single moment. They're going to have to keep this negative energy away from them. They're going to have to immerse themselves in the truth of our Lord. That's the only way they're going to be able to survive. You know, in this time that's coming, which is coming quickly, I mean, like within weeks, people are going to be thrust into, they're, they're going to have ideas and things that they didn't think they had. Now, some people may say, well, you know, all my thoughts are my own, then why would God say, take, take captive your thoughts? Would he say that? Why would he say, die to your flesh daily? Why would he say the flesh and the spirit war continuously? Why are those things said? Because we have the power to overcome our own flesh because the darkness in this world is about to be pulled out of everything. Everything with darkness in it, that darkness is about to surface in a way that no one ever forecasted or thought possible, but it's absolutely going to take place. And the only way a person can overcome this is through the true power of the Holy Spirit. And to stay within the blood of the Lamb, there is no hypocrisy in purity. There is no hatred in purity. There is no accusation in purity. And people need to be in that purity in truth, not acting like they're in the purity. They have to be there. It has to be in their hearts. And they have to do everything they can do to get a heart transplant right now so they can be strong enough to endure. Because we all have to finish this race. None of us knows when we're absolutely going. But I, I for one, intend to finish this race. And I'm trying to sound an alarm that something very different is going to be uh, all too evident to everybody who believes in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And without Him in truth, they're not going to make it. They will not make it without Him in truth. Cosmic Ray Detector on the International Space Station has found the first real hint of dark matter. That elusive substance scientists think outnumbers normal matter by a ratio of 5 to 1.
Ray Sherman has a song called Black Beatles in which they pay homage to the original group, The Beatles. We know that the original group, The Beatles, were practitioners of occult magic who idolized Aleister Crowley and flashed the 666 and Devil Horns hand signals in display of their allegiance to Satan. The Scarab Beetle in ancient Egypt was a symbol of Kefri, the early morning manifestation of the sun god Ra. Thus, Kefri, or the Black Beetle, is also the sun god Ra, or Horus, as depicted with the one eye centered in the pyramid. His name derived from Kefir, meaning to develop or come into being. It should also be noted that the Black Beetle is a comic book supervillain who is affiliated with a group called the Time Stealers. He appears as a black scarab beetle and he can travel through time. This connects the black beetle with the sun god, the devil coming into being, the alteration of time. The new after school Satan Club that was recently approved there by the Park Row School District. Tim Becker is outside the school. He joins us live with more. Tim. I want to give you a look at the gathering here over my shoulder. The bagpipes have just started playing once again. This is all happening because the newly formed after school Satan Club is holding an open house to tell parents about their new program today.
A fifth grade kid in South Florida getting a whole lot of attention tonight. Says people talking. His family decided to battle the teacher who told him he couldn't read his Bible at school. Fox's Robin Simmons reports. It all started with a book like the one sold here at By Faith Christian Bookstore. Less than a mile away at Park Lakes Elementary on April 8th, this fifth grader pulled out chosen material for free reading time. Then she said, Giovanni, what book is that? That's when he says the teacher asked him twice to put the Bible on her desk, and he refused. And she told me to get my dad on the phone. Here's the voicemail she left. Good morning, Mr. Rubio, Mrs. Thomas. Uh, uh, Giovanni called you because I asked him to. I noticed that she has a book, a religious book, in the classroom. He's not permitted to read those books in my classroom. A six-year-old girl was humiliated when her teacher cut off her one-minute oral report in school and told her to sit down. And what was the grievous offense she committed? She talked about the Bible. The teacher from Helen Hunt Jackson Elementary School in Temecula, California, told the first grade class that students are not allowed to talk about the Bible in school. Kendra Turner is a senior at Dyer County High School. She says that her teacher disciplined her after she said bless you when one of her fellow classmates sneezed. Turner feels her teacher was taking issue with her religion. When she stood up for herself, Turner says she was told to go to the administrator's office and later placed in in-school suspension for the rest of that class period. Her pastor tells me students had just talked about how to stand up for their faith last week in church. There were several students that were talking about this particular um, faculty member there that was very demeaning to them in regards to their faith. A school sparking outrage for calling the sheriff's office on a seven-year-old for handing out, get this, Bible verses to classmates. A teacher at the elementary school in Southern California banning the Bible notes like these during lunch saying there should be a separation of church and state. A sheriff's deputy even showed up at the boy's house and told him and his mom to stop because someone might get offended. Welcome to the New World Order where you can't do anything to offend homosexuals and Muslims and people of other faiths. The boy's mom regularly included a Bible verse and encouraging note in her son's lunch bag and the boy would tell his friends about the note and read them at the lunch table. The boy's friends then asked for copies of the notes and the boy's mother, identified as Miss Zavala, obliged and began giving him multiple copies. Sounds like good evangelism if you ask me. But the devil never sleeps. And on April the 18th, a teacher called Miss Zavala and said her son would no longer be able to share the Bible verses because he wasn't allowed to do such a thing at school. It was against school policy, quoting the separation of church and state. Ironically enough, the public school system in America was established to help children read the Bible and to learn its moral principles. For example, in 1690, the first New England Primer was published. It was basically a textbook that was used to teach children in American colonies for about 200 years. It was wildly popular and was actually used in schools of all types, both public and private. It taught the alphabet using Bible verses, had questions on moral teachings, the Ten Commandments, examples of prayers, and so on. However, the Supreme Court brought that to an end. Over the years, rulings have been made to eliminate Christianity from public schools. For instance, between 1962 to 1963, the Supreme Court banned school prayer and Bible reading in public schools. What followed was, in 1980, U.S. schools reported the lowest SAT scores ever after 18 straight years following the 1962 ban on school prayer. Not only that, morality has plummeted. Today, teenagers face such problems as getting pregnant at a young age, drug use, and violence, to name a few. To a great degree, it's because they don't know God. They are ruining their lives, really. And it doesn't surprise me. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 in the Bible states, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And according to the Bible, we can expect things to get worse before they get better. Speaking of the end times, Jesus said to his apostles in Matthew chapter 24 verse 9, Ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. While the world is conforming to a standard of acceptance for LGBTs, Muslims, and other groups or religions that oppose Christianity, Christians are being marginalized. While these other groups are gaining more rights, Christians are losing theirs in the process and are being discouraged, even punished, for evangelizing 
for fear of offending others. A religious freedom ruling has enabled devil worshippers in Florida to hand out educational material about their beliefs. A school sparking outrage for calling the sheriff's office on a seven-year-old for handing out, get this, Bible verses. A religious freedom ruling has enabled devil worshippers in Florida to hand out educational material about their beliefs. Calling the sheriff's office on a seven-year-old for handing out, get this, Bible verses. A religious freedom ruling has enabled devil worshippers in Florida to hand out educational material about their beliefs. A school in the USA will now allow satanic books to be distributed to children, after a Florida judge ruled in its favor. going to be going over some things and how the Illuminati is targeting your children and how the Pied Piper is literally playing music for your children so that they can be brainwashed literally. And the question is, are you awakened to this and are you seeing just what time it really is? Because children are the first targets and they go after the children because the children are so spontaneous and they know that they will absorb anything. So it's best to get them and reprogram them while they are young. And that is the game of the Illuminati. But if you just thought it was the demonic possessions, and if you just thought it was the Ouija boards, and if you just thought it was the cartoons and the music and the entertainment industries that's brainwashing them, as well as the food and the sugary cereals and all the GMOs and the fluoride and the water, well, I suggest you think again, because it's also the public education system as well. And as you can see, this was from IWB, but it says feds announced they own your kids and talks about a government document that even talks about what? the Fed and how they rule and control your children through the educational system, through public schools. And we know public schools is the biggest way that they, what, not only control your children, but mentally condition them to think a certain way. And for those of you who are awakened, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's time to wake up and see the brainwashing for what it really is. But not only that, we know each school that's a public school is funded by the government and gets money from the government, which means they can only talk about things that the Illuminati and that the Jewish Zionists allow them to talk about, which is not about anything because it's all about brainwashing even more. And by the way, the demonic possessions are on the rise. There have been so many demonic possessions worldwide that have been skyrocketing like never before. And like I said, they are targeting your children. Well, science at Tulane University used a recent installment of the network's Lean Forward ad campaign to insist that Americans need to see their children as the property of the government. I heard the statement by Melissa Harris Perry. Uh, we've recently uncovered some commonality with Adolf Hitler uh, in the same quote, but here is uh, the MSNBC host again. 
We haven't had a very collective notion of these are our children. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Once it's everybody's responsibility and not just the households, then we start making better investments. Now, Richard, this is the quote that we uncovered uh, from Adolf Hitler from a speech that he gave in 1933. He stated, when an opponent declares, I will not come over to your side, I calmly say, your child belongs to us already. What are you? You will pass on your descendants. However, now stand in the new camp. In a short time, they will know nothing else but this new community. As someone who's adept at translating collectivism into understandable English, could you tell us what she is saying here and the common ground that is shared with Adolf Hitler and why this should concern us? Well, that's a famous uh, quote by Hitler, but it's not the only quote that speaks about, you know, give us the control of your child by age five and we'll have him forever. Lenin said similar things. The Jesuits have said similar things. So it's all about indoctrinating our youth into a new way of life where the, the morals and values are irrational. They have no connection to existence, and an individual becomes part of a collective through citizenship to a state. And once that citizenship to a state becomes tyrannical, if, you're, if your government's not serving you, if they're not acting like servants and they're acting like authorities, how did they get those special rights? What is the train of logic from me and you that they got lo rights that we don't have? And so when you encounter that irrationality, you have to stop and think because history does repeat itself and without focusing on the words that are actually being said for instance in that MSNBC propagandized promo there's four declarative sentences in there if you analyze the terms the terms are ambiguous the premises are untrue there's many contradictions within those four sentences and therefore it's an intellectually bankrupt position I don't want to speak on the messenger I want to speak on the message because when you do not dismiss that as arbitrary and carry on thinking that Oh, it's a good idea. Our kids belong to us, but they're also part of the collective. If you don't stop and analyze and question those declarative sentences, you are being taken advantage of. You are being duped, and that's what psychological warfare is meant to do. Richard, this may seem like an odd question for some of our audience, but could you focus on, on what statists mean when they refer to community? Uh, that, that is a term that's very commonplace, but is it correct to say that it takes on a sinister connotation when it's employed by the likes of Melissa Harris Perry? Well, again, I don't want to comment on the messenger, but let's think about it. Anything, when it removes your volition and your personal agreement from it, becomes tyrannical. So anytime you have a community that's based on collectivism, and collectivism is simply denying your right to life, the right to think your own thoughts, to property, and all that, that comes with it as a derivative. The, uh, the derivatives of that are known as the Bill of Rights, these, uh, in, these rights are endowed by logic and reason, and that's why they wrote them down. They should have written down maybe a preamble of, you know, existence exists, the king of Britain exists, uh, they're being tyrannical and, and gone down from existence. But when you break that off and you have that philosophy midstream, then it's open to attack, which you've seen the Bill of Rights be dissolved because people don't have that connection to these rights are there because you exist and because you have rights inherently as a human being to resist tyranny for your own survival. And so forgetting that brings us under control. Forgetting that brings us under control. A religious freedom ruling has enabled devil worshippers in Florida to hand out educational material about their beliefs. A school sparking outrage for calling the sheriff's office on a seven-year-old for handing out, get this, Bible verses. A school in the USA will now allow satanic books to be distributed to children after a Florida judge ruled in its favor. We haven't had a very collective notion of these are our children. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. A billboard in Alabama ruffled feathers among locals and netizens because it displayed a phrase from Hitler right next to a photo of smiling children. The sign, which had been installed at the Village Mall in Auburn, read, He alone, who owns the youth, gains the future. The quote was included in speeches the dictator made in the 1930s and historically reflects Nazi youth programs. Next to that phrase was another that said, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it, which is a Bible verse from Proverbs.
the ends of the world have come upon us. And I've always been a positive preacher. I've never preached much about judgment. But my friends, you can't talk about the coming of Jesus Christ until you open your eyes and see that all that's happening around us now, the Lord is saying, look up when you see these things begin to happen and rejoice because your redemption draws nigh. When I receive this vision of calamities, it so frightened me. It's so, I was just so transfixed before God that he kept me up night after night, again last night in the middle of the night. And I asked the Lord about all these things. How are we going to do all that we're supposed to do when so many are forsaking you and people are going into hiding and they're afraid the ship is sinking? What do we do, Lord? Do we abdicate? Do we turn this whole world over to the devil and just let him have his way? Do we pay off all our bills and sold away a couple reserves in the bank, buy a little farm and escape and try to ride out the storm hoping a better day will come? Do you just give up? How can you look at all the tornadoes and the weather forecast and how can you see all the calamities that every prophet of God has predicted? How can the Christian remain sane? How can he keep his fortitude? How can he be objective? How can he be rational in an age that's falling apart? Lord, where do we stand now? And dear friend, you've got to hear what the Holy Spirit said to me. Just five little words, but so powerful, they awakened in me a glorious new hope and faith, and I woke up shouting. And those five little words, the blazes in my heart were these. God has everything under control. Hallelujah. 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 This is what I got. All of nature is under control. We hear earthquakes, famines, pestilence, hailstorms, killer heat waves, floods, drastic weather changes are breaking all past records. It looks like nature's out of control. But God's word is clearly predicted it would happen. The wrath of God is to be outpoured on this earth through an unleashed fury of nature because God is warning mankind that judgment is coming, and these are labor pains, and the closer we get to the birth of his kingdom, the more frequent and intensive we'll get until the birth of the kingdom of God. And it was God who told Job that he shut up the sea with doors. The sea can't cross the door. He set bars and doors to stay the proud waves. God said he took hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it, reserved the treasures of hail and snow against the day of battle. He divided the water courses for the overflow of the waters, that's the flood. He set the domain of the earth and the ordinances of the heaven. He sends forth lightnings and he scatters the wind upon the earth. Who does it? God does it. Child of God, in these days to come, the Holy Spirit would say to you, don't fear the fury of nature. God is still king of the flood, and you look upon those floods, earthquakes, and hurricanes, and you say to yourself, that's my God talking. He's calling, he's chastising, and he's saying, get ready. <laughs> Even the devil is under his control. As with Job, God may permit him to touch every material, physical thing around you, but you hear it? Satan cannot possess you or rob you of your faith in God. The devil's power is limited, and the Bible said even a baby Christian can put him to flight. 
simply by resisting into the Word and the blood, the Bible said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Does that sound like defeat? Does that suggest a victorious devil? Never. God has everything under control, and we are under his control, so we are not afraid of the devil. It is the fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom, and God's message is this. I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. You and I and everything that touches us is now under his control. No matter how things look in this drunken world, all things are still working together to everyone who loves God. It's called according to his purpose. All right, let the dollar fail. Let the depression or recession come. Let there be unemployment and pollution and inflation and wars and rumors of war. Let the fabric of society disintegrate. For the true child of God, everything is under control. It doesn't matter. Nothing can harm you. He said, look up and rejoice and be happy. The future is under his control. God has everything pre-programmed. He knows the exact moment that Christ will return. The final tribulation, the judgments, the battle of Armageddon are all on his calendar. And he's blocking them off one at a time. And the God who controls all of heaven and earth says to us, Christian, spirit-filled, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as small dust in my balance. <laughs> the nations of the world are just a drop in a bucket. All nations are as nothing before me. They are less than nothing. Don't worry about worldly powers. I've got it all programmed. God is still counting the hairs on our head. He's still counting the sparrows that fall. He's still hearing petitions before they're asked. He's still answering before being called. He's given abundantly more now than we could ever ask or think. So, saints of God, wake up. He's still saving and healing and baptizing and is getting his house in order. And to fear is to blaspheme. And now you can go over tonight and go to sleep and say to your heart, God has everything under control. Hallelujah. Police from the window, 7204 south below. Nobody park in front. Go to the sides for 700. Okay, they're already at there. Notified also. Car 13. Car 13. Both are in route. 10-4. 